Before we get started with what's going to happen in this video, please go to your ecarms.esuhd.org as shown on the screen, log into your account using your school login, open Canvas and log in, and if you have no courses, please click create a new course. If you have a course, you'll find just start there. Come back to this video uh, once that's done. So this slideshow that will be shared with you at the end is the agenda and it is all hyperlinked. So I know I'm going to go over a lot of information, but just remember it's all going to be provided for you here. And if you click on each of these, it'll take you to the appropriate slide. So let's go to the profile. The first thing we're going to teach you about. So the profile is all about you and it is the first thing everybody sees. So you want to keep it professional. So it's a place where you can put in your picture, your contact information and your Google authorization. Notice just like in all the other slides, there is a canvas guide. So if you click on that, it will bring you to a step by step of exactly what we're going to go over in pictures. So that will be available to you. There's a video of somebody doing this again for you. And down here in the speaker notes, there is step by steps of how to get there. So let's look at updating your profile. So I'm going to go to my EC arms and I'm in my dashboard. That's usually where you start. And I'm going to click on this green menu account choice and then I'm going to click on settings. Under settings the things that I can change are my picture, my pronouns, my contact, and push notifications as well as authorizing my Google Drive. Mine is already authorized. So the first thing you have to do is say edit settings and then always realize you have to say save. Sometimes there's some sort of orange button. I'll forget to do that. So then you go, why didn't it change? You have to hit that orange button at the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is change my picture. Well, I'm actually going to pick the same picture, but just to show you. So I'm choosing a picture that I put on my desktop. So I'm going to open that. I'm going to put the bubble where I want it and say save. Now, while that picture is showing here, it's still not updated. Remember that. If I just closed this and went somewhere else, that wouldn't stay. Then you can pick your pronoun. Notice the difference, the different ones you can choose. If you don't see yours that you like, please contact the district office and ask them if you could have another pronoun there. The email, your school email is already by default there. You can add an extra email address and just type it in here. You can also have push notifications to your cell phone. Please be aware that's just between you and Canvas. No parents, no students will have access to that. It's just you and Canvas. So if you want to get text messages about what's going on. Once you're done with that, you can scroll down here and you can authorize services such as Google Drive. Then you can use your Google Drive just like you did in Google Classroom and you say update settings. That's it. That's your profile. So if I come back over here, I go, okay, great. I got that. If I need some help, I can look, I can see that it has the directions down there for me again, but I can also come back here and go back to my agenda. So the next thing on our agenda is modules. Modules are instructional units. So that is just like you've always thought of the unit. You can put everything in there, but in this video, we're just going to concentrate on assignments. Again, you have the canvas guide, you have the video, and you also have the um, directions down here. So let's look at modules. So when I come over here, now I need to be in a class. For this particular demonstration, I'm going to go to my sandbox class. And notice over here in the blue, so we've been going through this green menu, but now I'm in a specific class. So I'm going to go to this blue menu for modules. And now you can see there's some in mine. You may have none. That's fine. And you just click on add modules and you put in a name. So this could be module one, what I want to call it. And I can add the module. I can add prerequisites and lock. But right now we're just looking at the simple stuff. Let's just do module one. And then I can add an assignment to module one. I can also add three or four assignments. I am going to pick create an assignment. You might already have assignments if you've made them before and you want to repeat them. You could pick them again and edit them. But for now, I'm going to pick create an assignment and I'm going to say that this is assignment number one. All right. And I say, and it's adding it to module one. So I know that's what it looks right. And I do that. But it's still, there's nothing there. It's just assignment one. So I have to edit it. So there is a couple things. Once you have the module, you don't have to do that again. But for the assignment, you do have to make the assignment and then click on it and then edit the assignment. And here's where we put in all the details. So you can make it a different name. You can say, read your textbook. 
and maybe you want them to answer review questions on page six. Um, notice it's it's a rich text uh, it's a rich content editor and so you can change things up here you can put in pictures you can upload media you can do plugins like you can embed a YouTube video your Google um, um, items can go there whatever you want it to be you can put a whole bunch of stuff in there but I can just type in there and then I'm going to say it's going to be worth five points. I can pick what category it is. Maybe I want it under assignments, but it could also be a discussion or quizzes because those are the assignment groups that I'll show you later where I got that. You can choose whether it's going to be points or not graded. Uh, points is, you think, points, percentages, complete, incomplete. You just want to check it off. Not graded does not show up in your grade book. It just shows up in the calendar, kind of like School Loop did. Um, you can choose what kind of submission it is. So maybe I want it to be online because I don't want to have to read their writing and it can be a text or a file because maybe they'll type it. I only want them to be able to do it once. You can decide or unlimited. There's group, peer reviews, all sorts of extra stuff. And then you can have the due date. So maybe I want this due on August 10th and I don't want to do it 11.59. So I'm going to put the time down here as 8.30. I like that better because uh, then they know it's due in the morning of that day. Oh, and it didn't take. So let's try again. I'm going to make sure that says 8.30. There's more than one place you can do it. I didn't click done is what it was. You had to click done um, and say done. And so now it says 8.30 a.m. So little things like that will get you, but don't get down. It's okay. Just go back, fix it, take a deep breath. You can add extra due dates, but that's all we're going to do. And we're going to hit save. Now, of course, you want to check to see that it's set for your students. So there's this wonderful button called Student View. But when I do this, it's, oh, it's not available. I didn't publish it. So I'm going to leave it and I'm going to publish it. And now I do Student View and it still says it's part of an unpublished module. Oh, all right. So I leave the Student View and I say, okay, that's right. I got to go back to my modules and notice this is in green. So it's not published. That's my publish button. So I'm going to push publish. And now if I do student view up here, it was hiding. Now if I do student view and I click on assignment one, now that shows and if they click start assignment, you can see they can upload a file or they can go do a text entry, right? And I didn't restrict it. So they could even use their Google Drive. They could use CK12. They could use Studio, anything that they want. And a lot of the kids will figure that out faster than we will, which is fine. Leave student view. I'm not saving anything because I'm not a real student. So that is modules, adding assignments by modules. So again, I can go back to my agenda and I can see now I've done assignment by modules. I'm not going to do assignments via calendar because that's just another way to do it. But just so you can see it, it is available in the slideshow uh, for quick tips. Um, you can drag things around on the assignment calendar and you can display the grade is not graded so it doesn't show up in your grade book. You know those days that you just want the kids to bring their book and you want them to remember to bring it but you don't want to write it in the grade book. It's a great way to be able to do that. So if I want to show you in the calendar view is your green column. That's, that's everybody. But you notice that my classes are different colors and so I would suggest you do that. But right now we're just looking at the sandbox one and so if I go to where I put the due date, there it is. I put it at due on the 10th. Let's we'll say, oh shoot, I forgot um, something's going on on the 10th. I don't want to do it on the 10th. I want to do it on the 12th. All you got to do is that. If you want to edit it, you can just come in here and you can click edit and more options and very easily change things like, oh, I don't even want it to be points. I want it not to be graded. So I don't want it to show up in my grade book. Done. All right, and you click save and it's all set. Just don't forget to click the save. You click out, it'll go away. Sometimes it reminds you, sometimes it doesn't. All right, so let's go back to our agenda. And now we're looking at grade book. So there's just a couple things from the gradebook that we're going to look at. It's a standard looking gradebook, right? It looks just like that. And again, has all the information there for you. So there's a couple things to know. You can do group weighting. So if I come over here and I go to courses and I go back to my sandbox and I go to assignments, 
Under assignments, I can click on these three ellipses and choose group weight. And if I want to choose to do a group weight, I can do that and I can modify what the group weight. I notice it's only 90%. So maybe I'm going to make this 20 so that now it's all weighted. And now I have four assignments. You can also add groups here and then change so you have more than four and make those percentages add up. So that's grading with weights. The next thing about the gradebook is your grading scheme, which is your scale. Like you can have a standard scale or you can have a sliding scale or whatever you choose, but that's per class. So I, I'm in my sandbox class and I go down to my settings down here. It hides, so it's always at the bottom. So I click on settings and this is really hard to find. I always go by it, but see how it says grading scheme right here. It's so tiny. Um, click on enable grading scheme and then set grading scheme. You can take the default one. You can select another one. The district has preloaded some for you. So you can use the GPA, the grading floor, pass, fail, standard. If you don't like any of those, you can even manage the grading scales. And then you can add your own grading scheme and create your own grading scheme. I'm going to cancel all that. And then you just choose which one, which one you want. All right, so that once you've made the grading scheme, you go back to where we were and you say save. So I'm going to go back this way since it's not letting me come this way. So we go back to settings and we go back to enable grading scheme. At set a grading scheme, select another scheme. I'm just going to select this one, or if I used one, I could. And then say done. And so now it's set, right? You always got to make sure you finish it. You can't just type it in the not save it. All right. So that is grading schemes. And the next thing is speed grader. So that's kind of like Google Classroom. So I'm going to go to a different class for that where I have things graded. So I'm going to go to practice. And in practice, I have my grades at the top. And if I want to do speed grading, once it's loaded, here's my whole uh, gradebook view. I click on these three ellipses and I pick speed grader. And with SpeedGrader, I can just start typing. It's very similar to Google Classroom. Here's the assignment. I just type in here and I would just say, oh, that's that's 10, right? Or whatever it is. Um, I don't want to do that for that person in particular. I want to go to options and show you that you can do it by, uh, it's by student name right now. It can also be by status. And what you'll notice up at the top is that all the orange dots. And if I go down to the bottom, you see all the check marks. But if I just type a number in here, it will save that score. That's all I've got to do. But you got to click somewhere. Don't just click out and type the five. It's, it's not recorded. I can click anywhere or I can just click on the next person and it will give them a score. Now I want to show you how you can do a default score. So if I go back to my gradebook, click on my ellipses, there is an option to do set grade as default. I can type in what I want that score to be and I can set it to overwrite, clicking that or not overwrite, and then set that as a default score and everybody will get that score. I don't want to do that right now, but that is something I could do. And the last thing is just traditional grading. So you come over here and you can just type in a score and it gives them a score and you just hit return and that's it. Or you can delete it and it goes back. So that's just traditional scoring. The very last thing I'm going to go over real briefly is your Canvas inbox. Remember it is in your uh, agenda, but I'm getting short on time. If I come over here and I click on inbox in the green, I can now click on this pencil and it'll allow me to pick a class to send it to. Let me do it to my uh, practice canvas because I have people I can send it to. I can then choose all the teachers so I can send it to my co-teacher. I can choose to send it to certain students or all the students and I can just say that this is uh, a test message and you have options of putting in video so you can record media here and it'll automatically put it in or just type something or do an attachment like normal and then you can save it or send it. Um, and you can also toggle between all the different types of things up here. So the last part of this is it does have the Canvas instructor guides all linked here. And there's a practice section. And I just want you to remember that there is a help 
always in this down here at the bottom there's this help you can get 24 7. good luck with your practice and i'm going to leave this screen up because this has a tiny url as well as it being in the notes below the comments below in this video good luck with your practice